okay, this is on logarithmic and logistic models. And we know from section 3.2 that, uh, actually section 3.3, I believe, that log of numbers less than or equal to zero are undefined. Like if you take the log or natural log or log any base of zero or negative numbers, they're undefined. That's why um, we have vertical asymptotes at x equals zero for logs. Uh, so you can't take the log of zero or negative numbers. Therefore, we can't uh, get the logarithmic equation of best fit if, any data, if there's any data points that are less than or equal to zero. So um, if we try to do that, uh, you know, Excel will give us statements such as some trend lines cannot be calculated. So I'll always give you positive values here when we do a logarithmic equation of best fit. Same thing happens with power functions as well. We have to have uh, positive data points here. So even if it says t equals zero is birth, um, we would have to either adjust that or um, not use that data point. So what we have now is uh, data points for uh, a child when they're one up to 37 months uh, old, and here's their head circumference in inches. And uh, let's go ahead and get the logarithmic equation of best fit for these data points. And I actually copied and pasted special as values into the logarithmic sheet, those data points. And then I click the button to find the equation of best fit. So the logarithmic equation that best fits these data points is this one right here. And if we check this uh, r squared value, uh, it's 0.9881. We could get the r value by taking the square root of this, and then the sign would be positive since it's a logarithmic equation that's going upward like this. And the square root of 0.9881 is very close to 1. So this is a great uh, model that interpolates well. Now, how well does it extrapolate? Well, I tell you, first of all, let's show you how well it interpolates. Let's put in some values like uh, 1 in here. You get 13.7 compared to the actual 13.75, so very good. Uh, let's do, how about 7? In 7 months, uh, it predicts it. It would be 13.703, and oh, let's do it again here. 7, it predicts that it would be 17.16 uh, at 7, and it's actually 17.25, so that's pretty good. Let's go clear up to 37. At 37, uh, we get 20.11, and it's actually 19.82. Now, why is it doing that? Well, because what happens with, with people when they grow, or in a lot of things when they grow, is that the, your growth is rapid when you're young. Uh, but then as you get older, your growth tends to slow up, and eventually you stop growing. But this function does not have a horizontal asymptote. So it's going to say that you keep on growing and growing and your head gets bigger and bigger. So like when you're 50 years old, which is uh, if you're 50 years old, how many months are old are you? Well, it would be 12 times 50, which I think is 600 months. It would say that you have this gigantic head circumference of 25 centimeters because you never stopped growing. So it's not a good model for long-term extrapolation. In fact, even at three years, three years, one month, 37 months, it was still too high. So while it interpolates really well, its extrapolation is not too hot on this type of model where it should have a horizontal asymptote. Now, if we can use this, though, not only to put in x values, but we could put in y values. Like according to this model, when will the baby have a head circumference of, let's say, 19 inches? And it looks like it should be between 16 and 19 months. If I put 19 in here, I get 19.7 months. Okay. Uh, when will the baby have a head circumference of 19.82? Let's check that a second. 19.82, well, it's when they're actually 31 months old is what the model predicts because the model is going higher than the data points out here. And uh, we're getting that at 31 months earlier than what it should have been. So uh, that's your logarithmic modeling and how that works. And again, you can start the start and end of the graph there, and it just doesn't level off, and you can make tables below. And that takes us through most of this right here. Here I got the r value by taking the square root of the r squared value. And uh, you can complete this table. Now, if you plug in these numbers, 0 or negative 3 for x, you're going to have trouble because it's not defined for those values. So it's no solution for those. And uh, negative 3, no, can't do that. You can't plug those type of values in. 0.5, we could, and uh, that's fine. Well, let's see what else we got here. Um, we answered, I think, all these problems. And now to logistic equations. Logistic equations are equations in this format right here, and they look really messy. But we have an Excel sheet that is 
uh, for problems in this uh, this format. And so don't be uh, afraid of these problems. Now stop being a wussy and get going. Okay, see, nothing to be afraid of. Just get going here. So here's the problem. Here's the uh, head circumference. And T is how old the baby is. And here is the logistic equation that gives you the, uh, the head circumference of the baby at a certain age, okay, certain months old that he is. So I put these coefficients into the logistic sheet. And in the logistic sheet, see, this is your A, the 0.4878. The B is the exponent right here, which is negative 0.1634. The C is the number at the top, 19.637. And D is any constant at the end, which would be zero for us. And that's actually the, uh, the data points that we would have there on that. Now, I'm going to go to my logistic sheet. And I typed those values in for A, B, and C, and D was zero. And now we get a graph that looks like this. Now you can set your start and end. Let's graph this from, let's say, negative 9 to uh, 37 or so. So that's a little bit more than uh, three years old. And you can see it goes up, and it is leveling off. Now that's really nice because that's what happens in real life. And this says that, on, that as the baby gets older and older, its head circumference will level off to 19.637, which is very realistic. And we can put in values that are negative in this as well. Like, for example, what was the baby's head circumference negative four, four months before he was born? Well, 10.13 inches. So that makes sense, actually. Might be a little bit high. This doesn't make sense. Let's say negative 20 months before he was born. Well, uh, that's before inception there, so that doesn't make sense. But uh, but we can plug in negative values. And another thing to notice that these have uh, two horizontal asymptotes. The only function we deal with that does that. So let me graph this. Let's say from negative 100 to uh, 37. You can see there's a horizontal asymptote here, and there's a horizontal asymptote here. Maybe you can see this better if I just go negative 30 to to that. And it tells you your two horizontal asymptotes, so that's what it's leveling off to right there. And we can plug in things like we did for X, or we could say, when will the baby have a head circumference of, of uh, 5 inches? Well, negative 10 months. Okay, that doesn't make sense. But how about 15 inches? Well, that would be in 2.7 months. And you can compare these to uh, the, uh, or make a chart if you wanted to, to the... Uh, to the actual here. So I could uh, scroll down here and maybe say start at 1 and increment by 3. And I could compare these values to the values uh, made on the chart. Like at 7, it says 16.99. And at 7, it's 17.25. So it maybe doesn't interpolate as well, but it does extrapolate well. And that's it with uh, this section.